In this video, we're going to learn how to describe matter using both physical and chemical properties. So for an example here, you could describe something as being rough or smooth, or you could describe it using its color or its luster, whether it's shiny or dull. We're gonna take some time to break down each of these definitions to identify how to classify things by their physical and chemical properties. So first of all, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So you are matter, air is matter, and so on. We talked about that before. Um, so you can see here that this flask of, of substance is on a scale and it's showing that it weighs 10.0 grams. So it is taking up space and it has mass. We describe matter by its physical properties and by its chemical properties. So physical properties are what you can observe or see or observe with your senses. So for instance, whether something is hot, so the temperature, um, the color, so the flame is orange, the candle is opaque, and it's a solid, and it's blue. Those are all things that you would describe using the physical descriptions. So physical properties and then a chemical property of a candle is that candle wax is flammable so it can be ignited and burn. So one thing we use to describe matter is the color. So what color is the substance and being as specific as possible is always more helpful because then we have a better understanding of you know the differences between different colors. Luster describes whether or not something is shiny or dull. So in this example, the item is shiny and over here it's dull. So that would be describing the luster of a substance. Texture describes how it feels. So is the thing smooth or rough? So that's another way of describing a physical characteristic of matter. Hardness. Um, we often sometimes misinterpret this one we think of hardness as being whether it's squishy or not and that's not the scientific definition of hardness. Hardness in science is how easily the item is scratched or dented. So for instance chalk it's not squishy but it is soft because it can be easily scratched. Um, if you ran your fingernail along a piece of chalk it would crumble so it is very easily scratched. Now diamonds are not soft at all. They're one of the hardest substances, if not the hardest substances. Um, they cannot be scratched. That's why they make valuable gemstones um, and they're precious because they don't get scratched. They don't get dented, they don't get damaged. They're very hard. Malleability is if something can be hammered into thin sheets. So metals are malleable and that's why we use metals for many um, functions because we can hammer them out and make them into many different forms so that's really handy. Chalk is not malleable. If you tried to hammer a piece of chalk it would break and into many pieces so chalk is described as being brittle which is the opposite of malleable. Solubility is whether or not the substance can dissolve or mix with water or some other solvent but in this example, we'll talk about water. So oil is not soluble in water. It can't dissolve with water, so it just lays on top of water. Kool-Aid is soluble in water. It mixes in with the water and becomes uh, makes a lovely drink that's quite tasty. Clarity is asking whether or not you can see through it. So something that's transparent, you can see right through it. So a piece of glass would be an example. Translucent, let some of the light through, but you can't see through it clearly. So frosted glass would be an example. You might see frosted glass on a bathroom window so you don't have to put a curtain up. So some light's getting in, so the room isn't dark, but you can't see through the glass and see what's going on in the bathroom. Opaque, on the other hand, is not, no light gets through. So it completely blocks the passage of light. We can also describe matter's physical properties as whether or not it's solid, liquid, or gas. So we can use state to describe. So solids have a very distinct shape. Liquids will have a distinct volume and they fill the, sh the container but take the form or the shape of the container. Whereas gas, they fill the whole container and they don't have a distinct shape. They're very, the particles are really far spread apart 
so they are bouncing around everywhere in a gas. Ductility asks whether or not the substance can be stretched into wires. So metals are usually ductile, so you can stretch them out into wire. You think of the electrical wires that you have, they are made of metal. So metals are ductile. Conductivity asks the question, does it conduct electricity? So metals, like a wire, would be conductors of electricity, but we don't want the electricity to you know, come out on us when we grab an electrical wire. So we, we wrap them with plastic, and plastics are insulators. They do not conduct electricity. So they protect us from being electrocuted when we touch an electrical wire. Viscosity asks how easily a liquid pours. So honey has a high viscosity. It pours very slowly. Molasses would be another example of something with a high viscosity. Water would have a lower viscosity. You can easily pour it out of a, a container. Honey, not so much. Melting point asks what temperature does a solid become a liquid? So for water, the melting point is zero degrees. It's also the freezing point. So it's the point where liquid water becomes solid or solid water becomes liquid. Boiling point asks at what temperature does a liquid become a gas or a gas become a liquid? So that temperature for water is 100 degrees Celsius. So at that point, the particles are moving so fast that they go from the liquid into a gas form at boiling point. So they are so far apart that they just break away from the att attraction of the liquid. So the last thing we'll talk about is a chemical property. And that describes how a substance behaves when it's changing from one substance to another. So some examples of a chemical property might be corrosive. So does the chemical like eat away at metals or burn our skin? So those would be chemical properties. Or is the substance flammable? Um, is it explosive? All of those things are describing how matter behaves, not how it appears. So those are chemical properties.